Congratulations on your nomination for Wet Bomb. Thank you. Um, your character Sam, it's a great coming of age film. Can you tell us you know, how it was to immerse yourself in this role? Did you find any similarities you had with her? I think it's a very universal story that she's going through, that kind of phase where you're not quite sure where you fit in. And um, I think that's why it was such an important story to tell. And I, I feel really lucky to have gotten to be a part of that. It's probably the most complicated character I've ever played for many reasons. There's no footage, there's no documentation of who Edward was. So all I had was the photographs that he shot to base the character on. And then the research that I did to find anything, even a grain of salt of anything I could learn about the man. But it also gave me the freedom to create a character from the ground up. I could pretty much have uh, the freedom to do what I wanted. And um, yeah, and basically have no borders or boundaries on where and how far to play this character. Sounds really great. It must be really great as an actor to kind of delve into that kind it of experience. It's so fun. Plus, it's uh, a character that's never been played before. It's a story that's never been told before. So just based on that, that was um, very exciting and the reason why I wanted to do it. And you also worked in the Soska Sisters directed Vendetta, which recently um, hit select theaters and on demand. So what can you say about that role? Um, the Soskas are brilliant. They're amazing girls. I don't know if you've met them, but if you have a chance to meet them, meet them, work with them. Um, this is my second film with the Soska twins, and I hope it's uh, the beginning of many more. Vendetta just came out. I haven't seen it. I'm very excited to see it, and but the reviews so far have been great. And uh, yeah, I just love those girls so much. I would work with them again. Hopefully, it premieres in Vancouver sometime. Yeah, we would love that. Congratulations! I saw on um, social media you just graduated from SFU. Oh wow, you're good. We do our research. <laughs> Sorry. We do our research, or we try to. Do wow, it. I'm really impressed. Um, yeah, I did. I just finished my English major, business minor at SFU. Yeah, really happy it's over. It took a long time, but. <laughs> and you were previously part of Arts Umbrella um, touring theater troupe. I so was. How did that kind of prepare you for your film and television? Oh, it prepared me so much. I started that in high school, and we got to go and tour to secondary schools all over the Lower Mainland and it was amazing and I learned so much about theater not too much about film but acting translates so. performing right? oh totally yeah it, it got me over my fear of presenting and I was really shy when I was younger so it helped and is there any upcoming projects you'd like to share um, oh, what do I have now well Strange Empire just came out in the States which is really exciting so it's on LMN so we're waiting to see how it's gonna do there um, and then I did some parts in iZombie and The Flash and I did a pilot called Tales from the Dark Side which we heard wasn't picked up but we're hoping needs to move networks it I really know. does I know it was really amazing to work on so we're hoping another network will pick it up we're just waiting so yeah what do you guys think is the best part about the Leo Awards you know such a good celebration of BC film and talent ooh um best part of the Leo Awards I when I first uh, moved here I was informed that all the women in this community are very supportive of each other and I will have to say that the Leo Awards for me reinforces that because all the women here are so nice to each other um, they take care of each other and, and genuinely they're just happy for each other plus it's exciting that you get to dress up and celebrate being a girl you know what I mean so, I don't know to me that's kind of the fun part of it shut up Denise I, I wasn't <laughs> saying anything that's the love right um, there. Um, the best part about the Leos is uh, really it's a chance to hang out with all your buddies that you don't only get to see on set if you happen to book something. Um, so yeah, it's just hanging out with your friends and celebrating how awesome everyone is. Yeah, uh, similar to what Lisa said, well, I dress like a homeless person in my real life. Um, so, but I do occasionally like getting dressed up, so it, it's an excuse to yeah. like said, remind it's yourself true. that you're female. Yeah, and celebrate it. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's great that you get to do it in an atmosphere when Pregolan has yeah, is up for nomination. Better. Yeah, even for better sure. to dress up with my ladies and we're color coordinated. Yeah, that's right. We did good. Yeah, we did good. good. It's sort of like a vigilante thriller sort of thing where this, uh, this family moves into a into a new town, and their son goes missing, and they're trying to figure out kind of who's able to who 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 took their son. Also, Mike Dopid's in it as well, who's obviously amazing. So don't want to forget him. Oh, I think it's pretty high as far. I beat one last night actually. Uh, we were the first ones to beat that room. Actually. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, I think it's pretty pretty high, pretty high. We've beaten almost every room they have, I think. But we failed a lot, like we fail a lot, but we go so much that it's, I mean, I don't know if anyone else maybe has the same amount of 
successes that we do. Second home. Oh, absolutely. They know me there. They know all of us there. It's all, it's all, it's all good. Sahar is actually a short film about, it's a family drama about the difficulty of young adults, young immigrant adults, struggling to assimilate into Canadian culture and sort of the backlash that they face from their parents to try to be uh, more connected to their roots in a more westernized culture. So what kind of inspired you to make this film? There was a number of things that inspired me. Um, a lot of stories from relatives and other family members and personal experiences that I've had growing up as an Afghan Canadian. Uh, there was also a huge case in Toronto a few years ago, the Shafia murder trials, about three young girls that were killed in a series of honor killings for becoming too Western too fast. And that, uh, that since I had read about it, it really stuck with me and I wanted to do a project about it because it really resonated. So I wanted to do it for a while actually. Congrats on your nomination. Thank you very much. Thank you. And you know, since 2010, you've been doing voice work on My Little Pony. Yes. They have a huge fan base, a huge fandom. You'll be um, doing a couple of conventions this summer in England and Germany. Have you been to these places before? Oh, yeah. I've, I've been to Manchester before, so we're going there again. Uh, I've never been to Germany for anything, so I'm super excited. And all the fans there are really excited as well. I just got back today from Minneapolis uh, from a brony convention, so I'm pretty tired, but that's good because I'm excited. <laughs> you look great, your dress is beautiful. By Thank the way. you very much. So, um, you're also a vocalist and a dancer, and I know your parents are both musicians, so did you yes. kind of see yourself pursuing the arts? For sure, I mean, it just, it really came naturally. I kind of grew up in a household where everything was musical. I'd wake up and I'd hear singing or piano playing and all that kind of stuff, so yeah, it just, it really came naturally to me. It's always been a part of my life. I mentioned this yesterday, but 4400, and you said there's actually a petition. There is a petition. Some fans have um, started a petition on Twitter to collect 4400 signatures to bring back the show. I don't know how successful they'll be, but I, I mean, I for one would love to work with everybody I did on the show again. Um, uh, but so we'll we'll see. <laughs> uh, do you have any upcoming projects you'd like to share? With I do. I um, I. I'm going to be in a film with J.K. Simmons called The Runaround. It's an indie film. Um, and I just completed a secretive project for Xbox. I can't talk much about it, but it involves a lot of running around and time travel. I think that's about all I can say about that. So for those who haven't seen the film yet, can you describe it, briefly describe it, and what you hope viewers take away from it? Um, so yeah, it's, it's basically a young woman remembering the five people that loved her the most in her life as she's experiencing death. So it's kind of a surreal interpretation of what that feels like, what that looks like, and uh, it's set in Norway, in Norwegian, so it's it's pretty unique for a Canadian audience. Are there any, sorry, Yeah, I, I mean, I think we just hope that people would take away, a, you know, a sense of maybe being transported somewhere else, and that was kind of our idea with going to Norway. And you guys are cousins, and um, it was always a dream of yours to do a film together. So, uh, since now that you've done it, what do you see in your future? Another one, maybe? Many more, absolutely, yeah. yeah. As many as we can. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You're up for um, two awards yeah, tonight. Right, yeah. So, can you tell us a bit about, you know, each one? Just a really brief description. Really brief, okay, cool. Yeah. So, the first one, I'm up for the lead in Black Fly. It's like, uh, it's an indie horror thriller film. The second is a, uh, a superhero kind of noir film, short film called Roar. So did you find you know either one more challenging to tap into the character than the, another, or were they both like equally? Well, I think each project has got its own challenges, right? I find there's certain things with each character that kind of get me into character, whether that's physical or that's rehearsing lines uh, and, and developing a history with actors. But uh, interesting enough, both both uh, films, the character that was my brother is uh, Matthew McCall. So he played brothers in both films. They were actually nominated against each other in both categories, funny enough. <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah. I'm sure it's like a brotherly love. You'll be happy if either of you takes it. Or For sure. It's, it's brotherly love, yeah. yeah. People think we're real brothers outside of like acting, too. It's hilarious. We were at this restaurant, and Matt scolded me because I, I swore in front of a little kid. And I apologized because I was all like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, big brother. Basically playing that out in real life. Exactly. It's happening. Yeah. And we have a fun question for you. Sure. Can you name all the um, Fellowship of the Ring? Oh, are you kidding me? Uh, no, not at all, but we'll try it. Uh, uh, Gollum, uh, Frodo, um, Gandalf, Saruman, um, 
That's about all I got. You have two. You have two. That's a good start. What do you mean? Why is only two? Because Saruman and Gollum are not part of the fellowship of the Ring. They're in the movie, right? Yeah. That's close. So if you're going with movie I mean, half points. Half points for those. Half points. <laughs> So congratulations on your nomination for your work in Remedy. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's exciting. It's and exciting to be here. Yeah, and unfortunately, though, it won't be coming back for a third season. But what will you miss most about the tremendous cast and crew? Oh, how funny everyone was. And it was just amazing because it's such a dysfunctional family. But we loved each other so much that it just it, it started to feel really like oh, where can we, where, what else can we explore with these people? And um, they were just a joy. Like, I, I'm just going to really miss that family. The crew and the cast were just an amazing bunch. And I'm, I, I'm very fortunate. I think I'm a transformed person for having worked with them. And I guess it's just now, how do I carry that energy forward into whatever the next project is? That's amazing to hear. And you know, you also worked on the film Edward, where you played Flora, getting a lot of buzz, a lot of love at the Leo Awards. So, what can you say about that project? Oh, it was amazing. It was one of the probably the most intense independent film experiences I've ever had, and I am like just insanely proud of everyone involved because it was absolutely a labor of love. It's all about just filmmakers and writers and actors who just wanted to tell a big story on a very small budget. Big heart, big story, small means and uh, I'm just, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled that it's been recognized the way that it has been and uh, I, I'm excited to bring it to Vancouver because we haven't had a screening here yet but that's going to happen at the end of August so I can't wait to share the film with everyone. Definitely something to look forward to. Yeah. And the last question we have for you is a fun question. Could you describe the Leo Award? Awards and one ward. Shenanigans. <laughs> shenanigans. Good, good shenanigans. Idea. Really awesome shenanigans. That's three words. There you go. Celebration. Fantabulous. Vancouver. <laughs> uh, exciting. It's a little overwhelming. <laughs> If you could be any ice cream flavor, what should you be and why? Um, probably cookie dough, because uh, it's very comforting, and I like to be at home in my pajamas watching Netflix. <laughs> Strawberry. Strawberry for sure. Wow. I'd probably be like chocolate vanilla swirl. Wow. I was going to say like cookie dough, just chunks of cookie dough in vanilla, I guess. Yeah. That's my go-to at Dairy Queen at least, so I don't know. Yeah, that's good. Jurassic Smash. Man. Oh, yeah. Mint chocolate chip in a heartbeat. Hands down. Yep. A little sweet, a little cool. Yeah. We have a fun question for you. Can you name all the Teletubbies? Oh, my heavens. I don't even think I know one. No one. Oh, man, I can't. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to try. Poe is my favorite, so I remember him. Oh, man. No, I have no idea. Thank you, Winky. Tinky Winky, Dipsy, Lala. Wow. You're the first person to like really? name like who you're oh, oh, that's really good. Okay, sweet. Yeah, Poe's my favorite, so let's I'll stick to him. He's the cutest. How many are there again? There are four. Dixie, Lala, Poe. Oh wow. Uh no. Not as easy as a Lord no, Lord of the Rings I know way more. Thank you, Winky. It. No! I was gonna get that! That was tip of the tongue. I would have had it. I swear to you. But I'll take three out of four. What That's was your one? Dip. What was our what? Dipsy. Is what? It's Dipsy. Dipsy? That said Dixie, didn't I? Yeah. Well, you were right. close. That's so close. I didn't really watch it, alright? The baby is the sun freaked me out. I didn't like that one bit. I'll say it, I don't like it. I don't like the Teletubbies, but I'm liking it less now as you're putting me on the spot about it. I don't like them at all. Not one bit. I'm so sorry. Yeah, you should be. <laughs>